Conocemos muy poco al doctor Oscuyan y es una persona muy, muy amable, muy humana. Me gustaría comentarlo con Inés, a ver si ella puede conseguir una cita para conocerlo más, conocer a su familia y darle las gracias por ello. So, I remember it was a Sunday afternoon. I was alone in my apartment. Uh, I went out to the balcony. Um, then I don't remember anything else, but for what the police say, I think that the door locked from my balcony, locked. So I was outside. It was very cold. I'm very sensitive to cold, so I must have maybe cried for help and, and yelled. And as I, nobody would, would listen to me, I think I tried to go down from my balcony to the second and first floor, but I fell. So basically I was called at uh, four in the morning uh, by Ines's uh, uh, firm uh, uh, work. They, they called me in the, at night telling me that something had happened to Ines. They, they didn't know what happened. So uh, I remember uh, being on call one night and uh, uh, got a page around some, you know, middle of the night around 3.30 in the morning and the emergency room physician who called me um, had a, a very sort of desperate uh, voice over the, over the uh, there telephone. There was integration by the police, the scientific police also, because um, we, we really need to understand what had happened. Of course, uh, we later on understood that it was an accident and uh, that Ines had fallen off her balcony Sometimes you sort of get bits of the story and people don't really know exactly what it is that, it, that transpired to have the patient come in the emergency room. Well, luckily for her, she, it was quite cold at night. So, um, so I guess that preserved a little bit uh, her body and, uh, and uh, her brain especially because she had no pulse and no vitals when she was brought uh, to the hospital. And uh, I remember sort of looking at her looking at her CT scan and um, just uh, had a real bad feeling in my gut about doing surgery, but um, I figured that, you know, given the circumstances that doing surgery right away would, would really only be her, her only chance, if she had any chance at all. She had a lot of blood in her, in her head, basically, and that had to be drained. And they, you know, the doctor explained me that it was uh, quite unfortunate, but um, most of the people were brought in the hospital in such a condition would not make it through the operation. So um, uh, 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 we took her to the operating room, and in the operating room, we uh, turned a sort of a standard uh, trauma craniotomy flap, which is to make a question mark incision starting at the base of the, um, the root of the zygoma and uh, making an, an incision that goes kind of, it's an upside down question mark. She was already, there, already under surgery and uh, had no chance to talk to anyone, to the doctor, to the, to the ER persons who were taking care of her. And uh, I couldn't ask anything. I couldn't ask them to do whatever was possible. And it was a bit, uh, a bit tough, you know. And, um, at some point afterwards, we, we went in the ICU and the, the, the people there were amazing. And I knew or not, and the anesthesiologist looked at me and, and sort of, uh, uh, we both sort of knew that uh, either uh, we would continue what we were doing or we would call uh, the case. Um, and given the fact that she was, uh, currently wasn't responding to any medication that we were giving her, um, uh, it was really a difficult decision uh, to decide whether to go forward um, or to uh, just call the case. And what I really loved is the fact that um, the doctor, the, the surgeon, even though she was brought as a, as a Jane Doe, as someone who was found in the street and, and no one was asking for her, I mean, the, until the last moment, even when she was dead, basically, they, they tried to pull her back. And, um, uh, uh, for me, you know, I uh, essentially it's one of these things as a surgeon is that you never want to give up, even if you know that that, that there's a 
1% chance that this patient might survive. And so um, for me, it was, it was really not a difficult decision. And, uh, uh, you know, you never want to give up, especially in a case like this. And so my gut feeling was to press forward. And the anesthesiologist was, um, had the same feeling, so we just continued forward. After, afterwards, the doctors understood that she, she had a big family and so many people caring for her and so many people who would really love her. And uh, they understood that they had done something very important for us. And I remember when I got to the ICU, I was just sort of putting my head down and trying to think um, about how I could tell that the, this patient's family um, in an honest way that, that this patient wasn't going to do well. Yeah, it was, it, it, was, it was tough. At some point I was ready to, uh, you know, to, I was accepting to have her being blind or handicapped for the rest of her life, but she had to come back. She had to come back. She, she had to be saved. Just, I mean, it was very, very selfish, but just for me, just for me, she couldn't, she, she couldn't let go like this. The uh, uh, doors of the ICU opened and my colleague came in and I told him, I said, you know, you won't believe the case I just did and uh, uh, can you just take a look at these x-rays and um, come and examine the patient with me and tell me what you think uh, her chances are and, and what should we tell the family? That was really sort of my uh, difficulty. And, and she fought. She fought a lot and we helped her. We were all constantly constantly there. So we both went together uh, and at the time the only person that was there was her um, uh, fiance and I remember going up to him um, in the ICU and we both introduced ourselves and here is you know we've never met this person uh, ever and here I'm supposed to tell uh, the fiance that I basically did the surgery on um, uh, uh, his uh, fiance and that she probably is not going to survive and you can imagine um, when I said that to him the uh, uh, not only anger but also the uh, disbelief that he had um, in his face when I told him that and and it was also very hard to uh, to to accept and to uh, and to endure uh, it was a difficult experience we we talked with Pierre before we came uh, to Seattle from Mexico and he was very anguished and uh, he was kind of released because we are Ines parents were here in order to give Ines and him support. It was a new good surprise every morning every every night she would give us uh, more than um, than we were expecting from her he stood there for a whole week without going to his work. She's my fiance. <laughs> About three days after the surgery, I talked with a neurosurgeon and I asked him, uh, is there any news, doctor? And he told me, no, he stood looking at the monitors and he said, he said to me, no, everything is stable. But you know what? Good news, uh, no news is good news. Uh, and he explained me that uh, in that, those kind of condition in which my daughter was, to be stable was a big step, but she could drop in a worse uh, physical state very quickly, so being stable was good. I, I did remember, though, uh, things that people would say to me in the hospital when I was in, in, uh, in a coma. And I thought that they had told all those, they had said all those things to me while I was at work, while I was at my desk, and I was in my desk, and, and they would come to me and they would say something like, you had an accident, uh, promise me you're never going to do it again, or things like that. And I would say, yes, yes, okay, I promise, or like, um, 
your ex-boss would call you like this. Did you know that? And I would be like, yeah, yeah, I remember. Yeah, yeah, she calls me like that. And they would be talking to me during the coma, and, and I thought that it was during work, but actually I was in a coma. And, but I, I do remember that because when I woke up, and I did remember, I would start like making them questions like, hey, did this happen really? Or, or did I imagine it? Or, or did you say it? But did you say it before the accident? And people would be like, no, it happened, but you were, we were talking to you, but you were in, in a coma. My son started to talk with her and telling her how much uh, he loved her. And uh, after a while she, uh, of uh, conversation, uh, he, my son asked my daughter Ines, tell me Ines if you are able to hear me. And then uh, Ines uh, answered with, a, uh, with a, a little smile on her left side of her face. She, uh, and she knew that she, I was around. She squeezed my hand so much, I mean, it was amazing. Juan Carlos keep on uh, talking with Ines and then she said, if you are hearing me, sister, uh, tell me, moving your finger. Your, and because her right, all her right uh, um, side of her body w was in a big shock, it was only the left the left side that uh, she was able to move. So she said yes with this kind of sign off. And that's when we started to notice that she was recovering because at least she was conscious in a certain way. So um, uh, I didn't get a chance to see her uh, after the surgery and my colleague who um, is local um, uh, took care of her and sort of gave me updates and in fact um, after the first week um, uh, he basically told me that she was waking up and they pulled the breathing tube and almost uh, the instant he told me that I, I was in um, uh, disbelief I didn't believe it. The first time Ines talked it was in the ICU um, something about like five days four and a half days after the accident so it was very, very rapid. I was not expecting any, any, anything. You know, we had just taken her, all those devices, all those tubes that were in her mouth <laughs> for quite some time, and she was still um, a bit uh, injured in all those areas. And she made a tremendous effort to be able to talk and to breathe out a word, if you wish. And she managed to talk to me and, and tell me squeezing my hand as much as she could. I love you. And um, uh, she, had make a, she had made a miraculous recovery within a week and basically was in a rehab facility in a, in a few weeks. So I woke up one day in a um, hospital in rehab. Uh, I don't remember anything. I think it was three weeks after my accident but I, I don't remember anything else. It's amazing how our body, it's, it's, a, it's a, this great machine that works so perfectly, and we don't understand that until we have an accident like the one I had, and who, which makes you realize and acknowledge that things are not granted. You, you, have not, you don't have to take life for granted. I mean, Really, it's, it, you value your life a lot more and, and every single detail about our body and how it reacts and how it works so perfectly together. It, you, you share that and, and you're, really, you're really amazed by, by our bodies. It's just it's incredible. So I think I'm going to see life in a very different way. It, I'm going to cherish every moment in a very different way. Yeah, there's also something I wanted to say. It's, uh, it's about the whole the hospital personnel. I mean, as I said, Ines was... Uh, there was always a lot of people coming and seeing Ines. Uh, she, she's someone that is uh, 
very popular, and that and she, she has so many friends who really really care for her, and uh, it was quite well accepted by uh, by the hospital crew, and uh, the staff was uh, was always amazed by how many people wanted to go and see her, and uh, they they helped us do that, organizing the visits, uh, letting her uh, even sleep there, finding a just a mat for us to be able to to sleep in her room and, and take care of her. About two months after our daughter's uh, injury, we went to Dr. Skuyan's office to see him because he wanted to, to see my daughter Ines. So he was amazed of Ines' recovery so it was two months later that I eventually saw the patient in my office, and uh, uh, as well as the uh, parents, and um, uh, even um, uh, I was um, a little bit shocked as to how good uh, she was doing. In fact, I'd say she was uh, basically normal. Dr. Eskuyan was the one that, that received me that day. He was the one that performed the surgery. He was on call that day in the hospital. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't actually meet him until uh, a month, two months later. Um, I was really thankful. I, I think I, I'm always going to be thankful to him for, for what he did and, and for saving my life and, and doing an amazing, amazing job. I, I have no words. And like I told him, I had already talked to him over the phone and I told him I think I'm, I'm never going to have enough words to tell you how grateful I am for what you did. And then you realize what's important in life. Uh, what's important in life is not your career, what's important in life is not uh, you know, money or leisure or, or anything like that. What's important in life is to have uh, your family, your couple. Um, to have all the people you love be basically being safe and around you and uh, and to be fine with them basically. It was the only thing that was important. I mean I could have given everything I had in the world to save Ines at that moment. I really understood she was the most precious thing I had in life. And that's why we want to, to make clear that uh, my wife and me are very grateful to this neurosurgeon because of his efforts and uh, to the institution and to all the people that uh, in one way or another participated in her recovery. Thank you all of you because we can say any more and we can do any more. Uh, as soon as I uh, shook the parents, the father's hand, I could see that um, he began to have a tear in his eye, and next thing you know, I was um, having, starting to uh, have a tear in my eye as well. And, but this is probably one of the most uh, emotional things that's ever happened to me, is to meet her family, as well as to get to know her. Minds when they get that phone call. Yes. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I can't imagine. Yeah, so. We are so happy. Everything worked yeah. out so yeah. well. And yeah. 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 Thanks to you and thanks to you. You have a great time. Thank you. Thank you so much. I love you. Yeah. 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 I love we you. love you too. Thank you. 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 Thank uh, there's very little that you can tell um, uh, if you sort of spend time with her that, that this person basically really um, died and came back and that's I think really what happened to her.